NFL 24 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Tennessee Titans. All that and more coming up next. We welcome all of you to Nissan Stadium on the banks of the Cumberland River in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. And today, two AFC teams set to do battle. It should be a good one, as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Tennessee Titans. Brandon Godden joined by Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer Charles Davis. And CD, these Titans stumbled a bit last year. They were coming off six straight winning seasons, a number one seed in 2021, but they fell to seven and 10 a year ago. A major surprise because it certainly looked like they had the division locked up around midseason. The big key for them, more consistency at the quarterback position, keeping their guy healthy and being able to run the football as impressively as they've done in the past. Meanwhile, for the visiting Bengals, it's a team that's been to the Super Bowl three times in their history, has never won it. But there's just a sense that this could be the year, and you don't disagree. I certainly do not, because go back two seasons ago, many thought it was a fluke that they got to the Super Bowl. Well, they came back the next year, and they got to the AFC Championship game, and were extremely disappointed they didn't get back to the Super Bowl. The pieces are in place, the confidence is high. Evan McPherson has this one teed up, and off we go from Nashville. Taking it about the one. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. And the Titans ready to take over on offense for the first time, and it is the now 35-year-old Ryan Tannehill who leads him out in his 12th NFL campaign. Those who expected Ryan Tannehill to go quietly into the night after the Titans drafted Will Levis, well, they clearly don't know this man well at all. He's a fighter and former comeback player of the year and expects to have his best season yet as a pro in this campaign. Tannehill to the air right off the bat. And Tannehill's got the first as he slides to a halt. 12 yards on the gain, a great start for this offense. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield, hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls, or sometimes something a little more improvised, as we just saw there. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. And this turns into a nice game with a slide at the end. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. The NFL's second leading rusher in 2022. Here's Derrick Henry. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. On second down, here's Tannehill. Wesco, the tight end, making the catch. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And now that sets up third and two. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. So third and two, this quite possibly four-down territory, though, if they're stopped. Now a play fake, and it's Tannehill. And that nearly intercepted. Boy, for a guy known for his hands defensively, that's a ball he probably thinks he should have come up with. And instead, it's fourth down. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Now, meanwhile, they go for it on fourth down, and my goodness, incomplete. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And on the opening drive of the afternoon, the defense forces a turnover on downs. 
And the Bengals now set for their first possession, and it's pro bowler Joe Burrow who leads this offense in his fourth season now out of LSU. Burrow may be young in his career, but he's helming the Bengals to one of the best stretches they've ever seen. 12 wins last year, which matched the team record, and they made the conference championship game in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time ever. At the center of it all is the man they call Joey B. 35 touchdown passes last year and almost 4,500 yards. Now a three-time 1,000-yard rusher, Joe Mixon. Danico Autry is in on the stop. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. Second and nine from the 44. Burrow looking to pass. He gets this one to Boyd. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And now two yards to go on third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. Third and two, now Burrow. And he is caught, and he is going to have a Bengals first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Now we're going to get a timeout here for an injured player, and that's Jamar Chase, who is in some obvious discomfort right now. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Now Burrow. This is caught. Touchdown. Joe Mixon from 17 yards out. And the Bengals will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. It oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. the touchdown McPherson on to kick this one away from a couple yards deep he'll bring it out of the end zone and no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17 yard line the Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive and a drive that stalled out last time went for it on fourth didn't get it how does that translate here I would imagine momentum's with the defense definitely with the defense because anytime anyone goes for it on fourth down that's telling you as a defense that they you can't stop us we don't think that you can and when you actually do that may put a little dent in the confidence of the offense the next time they hit the field yeah we'll see if they can bring that pride the offense this go around and he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage dj reader former texan there on the tackle what an advantage having a elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Henry again on second down. And he is going to lose yardage here. 
That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Third down and 13. From the gun, here's Tannehill. And that is incomplete. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they have to give up the football again after this one. Now on fourth down, here's Ryan Stonehouse to punt for Tennessee. Back deep for Cincinnati, the rookie Charlie Jones. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bengals take over first and 10. shotgun it's Burrow and incomplete a drop there in the middle third of the field that'll bring up second down so much of this game is focus and concentration and whenever I see guys running the in route I know that in the back of their mind they're always wondering who's lurking inside that might put a big hit on them as they try and catch the ball Burrow once again here on second and ten he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now it's Burrow. caught but I don't think he stayed in bounds no he didn't it's incomplete the throw took him past the boundary and it's fourth partner we've got ourselves a ball game and those guys on defense they came to play slipped up on their first series but they're definitely settling in now and letting it be known that points won't come so easy again on fourth down the punt team is on as this is sent away it's taken to the 26 so possession goes over here on the punt, and it'll be Titan football. Tennessee offense set to go again. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Powering forward, and he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they block well too. Not only have they stouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Tannehill on first down. Oh, and that is incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways call this penalties. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. Five yards, now it's third and five. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. They'll come up facing third and five. Here's Tannehill. And this is gonna be incomplete. 
And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. On fourth down, Ryan Stonehouse on the punt. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. Yeah, from that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. First and 10 and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about, us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. There he goes, left side. A big play there for Cincinnati. 41 yards. Well, that's something that this defense is not going to be able to allow if they're going to have success here. They've got to be able to wrap up and get guys on the ground. They end up letting him get away, and it turns into a big play here early on. I can just see veteran observers of the game shaking their heads and talking about the dearth of tackling in the game today. The big play has him all the way out near midfield for a first and 10. They go play action with Burrow. And he's going to drop this off to Williams, complete. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. And that's good for a gain of six at its second down. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's a second and four. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Short throw to Smith. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Jonah Williams, former first-round pick, the guilty party. Still first down. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Play action, it's Burrow. This is caught, it's Boyd. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That's good for 28 yards. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw may be the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Burrow going to give this to Mixon, and he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Aziz Alshair, former 49er, in on the tackle. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Here's a second and five. Here's a quick throw caught by Smith. Only able to gain a couple there. And this will wind up being a third and three. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. They're passing here. Joe Burrow working the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Bengals are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation.
Now it's Burrow. Throw right side into the hands of the tight end sample. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. On second and goal, one man stands in the backfield, and that's Mixon. Throwing again, it's Burrow. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Just looking at it from a defensive perspective, when you break the huddle in the red zone, tight end is one of the guys you've got a key on because quarterbacks want the ball in their hands fast in this position, and they want to get it to someone. And in this case, he had the play. They just didn't complete it. Third and goal, Burrow. And that is incomplete. Fourth down now as the Titans' defense holds up in coverage. Boy, such a good drive. You'd hate to have it end in three. Do you think about going for it? Absolutely. I mean, the fact that they've moved the ball so well should lead you to the decision that maybe we should go for it right here. Also, as a head coach, show some confidence in your team. Let them know you think they can go get it. Burrow going for it on fourth. That's to Chase. He's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Bengals go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. to the touchdown McPherson on to kick this one away fielded just outside the goal line and makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23 yard line and here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field they've been outplayed early no question down 14 nothing already as they come up first and 10 Tannehill now to throw. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Offensively, might be thinking, what's going on here? One for their first seven throwing the football. So maybe they're thinking about rethinking their strategy a little bit right now with the way that they're throwing it around, not having that success. Might have to lean on the running game for a little while and see if they can get it back in form. On second and 10, Tannehill. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. The Clemson product, DJ Reader, got in for the sack. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. So third and long after the sack, tough task for Tannehill and the Titans. He'll drop to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line.
The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. They've got things going their way early. 14-0 lead and the football. First and 10. Burrow's throw caught by Higgins. 18 yards on that one, and the Bengals are moving. First down. Fourteen nothing the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals in control of the football. As they've got it with a first and ten. Mixing up the middle. And they'll get him down here at about the 42. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Second down and three. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. Throw left side, complete. That's Smith. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. Now how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. Now Burrow on first down. Complete. Smith has it. Touchdown, Bengals. Bird Smith Jr., 26 yards. And the Bengals take a three touchdown lead. And what a weapon he is at the tight end spot because when they throw him the football downfield, they count on him getting additional yardage almost every time. And that's exactly what he did there. Caught that, ran with it, all the way to the end zone. McPherson now for the extra point. And it is now 21 to nothing. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he returns this to the 22. The time is called. Looks like a member of the Titans in some discomfort out there. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores, and I know we're in the first half, but the way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse if this is an important possession, but I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. And if they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. And he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. Third and two, Tannehill. Able to find the open man. That's complete. 
Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A big play that time on the catch and run. 31 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Inside handoff, Henry to the 36-yard line. Stop there. And they'll come up second and seven. Again, it's Henry. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. It's a game of two. Brings up third and five. This offense so far on third down, just one for five to this point. This will be third and five. Now it's Tannehill. That is caught. DeAndre Hopkins, he's all alone. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. First catch of the game for Hopkins. It's a first down. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't caught their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. In motion is Westbrook Aquina. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. In motion is Westbrook Aquina. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Give him two yards. That sets him up first and goal. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Here's Tannehill. Feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. It's a loss of four, and now it's second and goal. Well, that's not how you hope to draw it up there on first and goal, CD, by taking a sack like that. Well, they tried to be aggressive, didn't they? They didn't want to try and work their way past the goal line. They wanted it right there on that play. Unfortunately, it backfired against them. Now they have to try and pick it up here moving forward. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Well, you'd have to stretch for this one. This is four down territory. They've got to get it in with the deficit that they're facing. Absolutely. It's not the fourth quarter, but still, you, I think you, you can't be thinking three here. No, if you do that, you might as well go ahead and fold up on this one. But I... And he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Derrick Henry taking it in from two yards out. And the Titans are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Well, this had not been the greatest of first halves to this point. They've been pretty well dominated in all phases of the game. So this was an important drive just to show they can move the football and finish. And now they're on the board here on the touchdown run. Full connects on the extra point, and they'll cut the lead to 21-7. So that one a long 11-play drive, and Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. On the return is Charlie Jones. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Here again comes Joe Burrow in the offense for the Bengals. He really continues to pick apart this defense. Last drive, perfect, and it culminated in his third touchdown pass. As long as we've been doing this, how many times has a player in this type of a zone described the game as really slowed down? Yep. So right now, instead of warp speed, it's snail's just, pace. Oh, snail's pace for him, and he can do whatever he wants. Feels like he has all the time in the world to throw the ball, and his offensive line has been giving him that. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. A good pick up there, a 22. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? A bit of a jump there, CD. He breaks the line, and that'll be five yards. And you've got to stay more disciplined than that, Brandon. That's just a free gift to the offense. Now a chance to make that encroachment penalty really hurt. First and five. Here's Burrow. Short throw to Smith. So just three yards on the completion there. And they'll be left with second and a couple. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Now they go play action now. Burrow. The pass to Boyd, and he brings it in on the crossing route. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 29-yard line. The Bengals' passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. Burrow on play action. Flushed out right. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. He'll get five out of the scramble, hit second down. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. On second down, here's Mixon. Stiff arm do. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. But he's got Smith here. Touchdown! Bird Smith Jr. with his second touchdown here in this first half as his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total, but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. McPherson on for the point after. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. A drive that time of six plays. And it ends with a Bengals score. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. 
A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now, but let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. All right, help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing is a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well, so give some credit to the defense. The offense on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This is third and 11. Tannehill. And that's complete to Westbrook Akine. And he'll be touched out here, but not before he does pick up the first. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. And I don't think there's any question that this offense is going to need to hit on a few more plays like this. It's been a difficult first half for them, to say the least. And I do believe if they want to get back in this game, they need to start right now. It's kind of like making adjustments. If you try and wait until the half, it's probably too late. They need to get going right here. Short completion, just four yards, and it's second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. We remind you in just a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Orlando and our good friend Jonathan Coachman. Coach will run through some of the numbers and the next-gen stats from this first half of football so far. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Again, Tannehill. Buying time to his left. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. They asked him to take charge and get them to a spot where they could at least attempt to kick before the half, and he does just that. Didn't trust what he saw downfield, so he took it upon himself to get them into field goal range using his legs. That's coming through with a play they needed in a big spot. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. To throw is Tannehill. Steps away to his left. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. Holding offense. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Back to throw, Tannehill. Open man, Westbrook Akine. Touchdown, Titans! Nick Westbrook Akine, 42 yards. And the Titans are able to cut into that deficit. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal, because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. Extra point up and good by Folk, and that cuts the lead to 
There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And this will come out to the 25 as Jones elects for the touchback. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. And right now, we've got a little bit of an offensive masterpiece going on both sides, moving the football, scoring points. It's almost like somebody put the defense on rookie mode in this one. I mean, we haven't even left the first half, Charles, and we're certainly on pace for a shootout. An excellent start for both offenses. The fans have to be enjoying this to seeing all these points go up on the board. As a former defender, you know I'm not enjoying this at all, but right now, both these teams just trading haymakers. Let's see if anyone slips up first. Can anyone counter with a nice little jab and get the down the numbers? There he goes. Joe Mixon, touchdown Bengals. Joe Mixon, two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Bengals are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. I don't think you can get any more efficient or tidy, whatever word you want to use in that. And one play, 75 yards in zone. Yeah, efficient, tidy, excellent words. How about explosive? 75 yards, one play. That means everyone handled their assignment, doesn't it? It doesn't just mean that the defense broke down. They really executed the way that was drawn up on the whiteboard. Big time play, big time result. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. But Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. On first and 10, Tannehill. Now throw right side here, gonna be incomplete. Let's face it, if you wanna get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you gotta hit. He's wide open right there. Gotta be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Now a second and 10. Here's Tannehill. A short throw taken in by Conquo. Now the Bengals gonna use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's third and 10. Now Tannehill. And that is incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now, as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. The Bengals going to take over late in this first half. And just inside of a minute left, Charles, they got a pretty long field ahead of them. I'm curious to see how they play this, but you would think definitely enough time to at least try to get three out of this. Yeah, you want to move with a nice sense of pace. You want to up the tempo a little bit, but you have to do it with some poise as well. You don't want to go so fast that you hurry yourself into mistakes. There's enough time to put points on the board if they do it right. And even though they have the lead, you know that they would love to extend this lead before heading to the locker room. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. The offense schemed going five wide, trying to create a chance for the big shot, and they took it. 
If he comes down with that one, that's a huge offensive swing. But credit the defense with a nice play, knocking that one away. On second down, here's Burrow. Short throw to Smith. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. Off the play fake, here's Burrow. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Here now is second and ten, again for the 41. Again, it's Burrow. And that's going to be caught. T. Higgins. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Let's just call it what it is. This has been a flat-out struggle for this defense all game long. They've really had a hard time slowing them down. And while I'm not big on speeches and guys jumping up and down, they might need their team leader on defense to get in their face right now and light a fire under these guys. They've got to start playing better assignment football and start getting guys on the ground. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. That ball was tipped in the air and while it ultimately fell incomplete, it caused a few anxious moments for the guy slinging it who's had quite a day. He knows how to get it into the end zone. He's throwing it really, really well. And maybe Lady Luck is on his side because he avoided his first interception of the contest. And he'll get seven yards from the 17 to the 10 before he's taken down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, a chip shot here. McPherson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So after five touchdowns offensively, hey, maybe it's time to get the kicker a little work, and he's able to connect there. I love that empathetic side of you. You're worried about him getting some action, getting to be a part of the game. Well, he got in and got it done. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit, but first, Welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a strong first half out of the quarterback, Joe Burrow. He's over 300 yards passing already as he's looking to possibly put his name in the record book. All right, coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
The Bengals set to receive. They have the lead and the football to begin quarter number three. Charlie Jones now from his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at the 20. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Short throw to Smith. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven at the 23 yard line. Now second and seven from the 23. Burrow will throw. He gets this one to Boyd. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. Burrow looking to pass. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. From the 48-yard line, here's second and six. Now it's Burrow. He completes it to Boyd. And Boyd going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll take this down to the 44-yard line. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. Throwing again, it's Burrow. Dancing to his left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid game to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Now Burrow to throw on second down. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Credit the sack there to Arden Key. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. They'll look to throw. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. And that is exactly what you needed defensively. It's a long road back from here. But that's a good start to the second half as they force a punting situation and a fourth down. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. He'll start with a give to Henry. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. 
A shotgun snap for Tannehill. On the slant, Burks. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Tannehill on target to Burks, first down Tennessee. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football right now. I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. A first down carry for Henry. He'll get this up to about the 44. Offense looked a little bit discouraged after that play, shaking their heads a bit, looking at each other. I think they thought they'd get a lot more out of that call. Sometimes you do get the running lane you want, and other times, the defensive front, they just break up the play before it can get going. From the 44-yard line, here's a second and eight. From the gun, here's Tannehill. It's complete to Hopkins. It'll be a gain of five, and now we've got a third down and three. Now it's Tannehill. And that is incomplete. But the pressure there on third down, forcing the errant pass. Fourth down coming up. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blank of those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just loft one toward the bench, not too close, mind you, and live to punt the football. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. Ready to go on offense. Out come the Bengals. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still, they've got the lead here, and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at the 20. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Short throw to Smith, and he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. More muscle up front for this second and two. They've got three tight ends out there. Here's Burrow. Quick slam caught by Chase. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. The LSU connection. Burrow to Chase for the Cincinnati first. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. Has a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal gain. Mixon with a first down carry. And now off to the races down the right side. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. He's able to rip off 32 on that one. It's a first down. And having built that kind of a lead, they're able to do whatever they want right now. All momentum on their side, especially now running the football. Yeah, you're talking about a defense being on their toes. They don't know what's going <laughs> to hit them next at this point. No, they went from toes to heels, and they're trying to figure out how to get back to the toes part. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And that'll be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd. A 24-yard touchdown. And the Bengals have opened the lead up to 30. Well, on the other sideline right now, it's just absolute dejection. But, Charles, let's focus on the positive. With the lead that they've built here, they've done pretty much everything to perfection in this ball game. They certainly have. Makes me think that their week of preparation was excellent. And they flowed into this game 
and it carried over. And right now, I don't expect them to back off at all. They're playing so well, they just want to keep it going. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. Out come the Titans now. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here and maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to <laughs> hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, it's, let's just say it's been unusual. Ball at the 23, second and eight. Here's Tannehill. A short throw taken in by Conquo. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. So the completion good for seven there. And third and one now. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 62 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take him the distance, but a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, oh, he's a nice luxury to have, isn't he? A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and 10. To throw is Tannehill. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. Second 10 coming up here in Nashville. Third quarter action. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in... He's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. And you can tell just by looking at him that this offense is a frustrated unit. Things are really unraveling here. And as a head coach, time to earn your paycheck. You've got to find a way to keep it together as that brings up another fourth down. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Fair catch called for and collected right at the 10-yard line. Joe Mixon and the Bengal offense ready to go back to work. And really, a lot of guys you could highlight on this offense with how well they've played, but he's one of them. He's been spectacular so far. I'd say he'd be the number one, wouldn't you? Yeah. Because it's not just the numbers. It's, as you said, I think you said focal point. Well, that's what he's been, and that means he's created other opportunities because they've had to bring the defense to him. He's run it really well. He's caught it out of the backfield. They're trying to stop him. That means there are chances for the rest of the guys to do damage themselves. Brings it just past the 15, able to avoid the initial contact, but not much more there on the play. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? Back to Mixon on second down. 
And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Heavy set out there on third and one. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. They tried their best to pick up that third and one, but their surge wasn't enough to counteract what came back at them from the defensive side, was it? Offensive line, especially in the middle, looked like they were on skates a little bit when that one started. So now we bring up fourth and inches. This would be a critical call. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. And take it right at the 35. A 39-yard punt, a return of five. And out will come the offense as they take over. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He'd love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. 86 yards on the ground now for Henry. He's got a first down. Another powerful run and another workhorse season in the books for Henry. Let's take a peek at his numbers. He's led the NFL in carries and top 1,500 yards for the third time in four years. In addition, fifth straight year with double-digit touchdowns. Now a throw here to his running back. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up second down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. A 20th carry now for Derrick Henry. Runs through the contact. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Nashville. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They've been moving the ball well, but this drive was in danger of stalling out. Fortunately, this is a nice throw here, and they're able to pick up a new set of downs. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. From the red zone now, Tannehill. No sense risking anything there on first down. Even though he's still in the pocket, he had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in a spot where the only people could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Second and 10. Now Tannehill. That's to Burks, and he's got it. Touchdown, Tennessee. An 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Titans get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. Those are the touchdowns that aren't just scored on Sundays or on Monday night. Those are the ones that are scored during the week because they had that preparation in a great route run. Oh, I love that observation because you don't just roll out on game day and say, okay, go run this route and let's get it done. That means exactly what you said. The practice had to occur beforehand, which led to the timing, which led to the touchdown. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. 
No run back here for Jones. A touchback. The Bengals offense getting set and ready to go again here. Well, the win for them at this point seems pretty assured. I mean, still a decent amount of time left here in the fourth quarter, Charles, but you got the football, you're up three scores. They have to be feeling really good about where they're at. I love your observation skills, partner, because I think you saw them charge onto the field, fired up about another chance to get into the end zone. Looks to me like this group is ready to crush any hope left on the opposing sideline, and they want to do it with some gusto, too. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. Back to Mixon on second down. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. 91 yards on the ground for him so far. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. And this offense on third down today, three for seven so far in this game. They're up against a third and one situation. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Tell you what, partner, the way he's been slinging in this one, I think he should be ticketed for a baseball cap and a set of headphones for the next drive. He's been absolutely sensational. But one thing we've both learned about quarterbacks in this league, they often stay on the field longer than you expect. From the gun to give to Mixon, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. We've seen that before. Jeffrey Simmons making a stop behind the line. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? On third down, Mixon. And it was a stiff arm there that freed him enough to get the first before he's tackled. Four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. Brandon, unfortunately, I've been here before. They've had two opportunities to stop them, so this is demoralizing. They haven't gotten it done. Now you're calling all your blitzes, all your attack defenses, but you're not worried about playing your normal position. You're going to take chances now. Well, you said it. Two third down opportunities to get off the field. Couldn't do it, and the clock continues to roll. That tackle by Jeffrey Simmons. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. They go play action with Burrow. He will find his man Chase complete. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. There's a beautiful throw there, and he's been sensational the entire game, and moving it around, spreading it, hitting the right guys. And look, under normal situations, partner, I would expect him to come out of the game now. They've got it in hand. But you and I have been around this league a long time, and every time we ask head coaches about it, hey, why don't you take your quarterback out when the game's in hand? They just kind of give us that look like... That's what he's paid to do. So it's a very unusual situation. I'd want him out. They tend to leave him in. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. From the 21, here's a second and seven. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. He's going to have the hook up here to Chase. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he gets this down to the 13-yard line. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. Again, it's Burrow. 
And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Well, their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns, and it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. 101 yards rushing for him now to this point. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. He's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Irv Smith Jr., a five-yard touchdown. And the Bengals have sewn this one up as they add to their lead here in the fourth. And Charles, they continue to have trouble stopping him as he's into the end zone yet again. Yeah, that's multiple series now that have ended with him in the end zone. A perfect plan on how to utilize him best when they get in close. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. They'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. And the Titans getting set to go. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD, but unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Tannehill's throw is on target to Burks. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Two yards to go, second down. Tannehill now to throw. He gets it to Burks again. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Just more of the same here. It's back-to-back -back catches for him to start the drive. They've looked his way quite a bit, and with good reason, as this duo picks up yet another first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's Tannehill. They set up the screen for Henry. No gain on the screen there at second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Here's second and ten. To the air again, Tannehill. Open man, Westbrook Akine. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync stayed in great communication and as he dragged across each zone you see him pointing communicating there he is and they passed him off to each defender ended up making a nice play even though it was complete 90 yards receiving now for him in the ball game it's a first down Tannehill 
his throw here is incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Again, Tannehill. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. This will be the eighth play of the drive here, third and four. Back to throw, Tannehill. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 31-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Here's Tannehill. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Now Tannehill. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. Tannehill. And that's complete to Westbrook Akine. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. Now that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together to watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route. He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been out playing all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. Is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. He has been a factor in a multitude of ways, over 100 yards rushing. He's approaching that number in the receiving category, too. And you know why I've always respected guys who can have these types of games? As a runner, you're going through a pile. People are raking at the football all the time. Your hands take a beating, okay? And to be able to still go out and catch the football in open field after going through that, that guy's dynamite. He's been dynamite in this game so far. We'll see defensively if they have an answer because they need to come up with something. And yeah, they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. 25 yards, the pickup there, and also a first down. Well, we're beyond the tone setting right now. This guy's been the bell cow all day, and he'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock, and lead his team. Back to Mixon on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? Here's second and seven. Again, it's Mixon. 
And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. But Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're gonna cherish.